You know, a feature that's standard in Garmin's G1000 NXI integrated avionics and even in the company's latest retrofit GPS navigators is visual approach guidance, widely misunderstood. Now, visual approaches are loaded and activated just like you would an instrument approach, and they're even displayed up on the PFD the same way with lateral and vertical guidance. You can hand fly it or the autopilot can fly it. But a lot of pilots don't take the time to go to the pilot's guide to figure out how this really works, and that's a bad idea. Now, we flew a new Cirrus SR-22 a while back. I found some clips from that footage where Cirrus's Cliff Allen described the button pushing process. I think they're important enough to make a separate video, so let's go back up to the cockpit and see how it works. Uh, the, the visual approach is probably one of the, the, the most useful upgrades I've found in the entire Perspective Plus. I have a good friends that are airline captains, and they're required to back up every visual approach with an instrument approach. It makes sure you're lining up for the right runway, for the right airport, and uh, the Perspective Plus will, will set up a visual approach for every runway in the database. What it basically does is it creates a, a uh, extended center line and creates a waypoint at two and a half miles, that's a final waypoint, and a straight in at five miles. And then it computes a three degree glide path, so it gives you basically a stabilized approach. When you load it and activate it, it will then create a, a vertical descent, so you arrive at the straight in waypoint at the right altitude to be right on the Vasis, for example. You could be right on that three degree uh, glide path. And the airplane will calculate that in, in to prompt you to start your descent. Or it, it will tell you what your vertical speed requirement would be. Now these are visual approaches, so they're, they're, uh, you, you still need to be looking at the airplane. They don't give you terrain clearance, but the vertical situation display depicts all of the terrain and the obstacles between your position and the runway. So if there was a mountain, it would show up in the vertical situation display, and then you can edit the altitudes at the straight in or the final to arrive at an altitude that will keep you clear. So that's something you can set up in a in cruise flight, so when you approach the airport environment, you've already done all your planning for a safe descent to the runway. So I'm just gonna go to my flight plan here. Well, actually, we'll start with procedures. We're gonna select the approach. We're going into Wyndham, and we can see our RNAV approaches, but we also see visual approaches for every runway. We're gonna use Visual 27 today, so I'm just gonna press that. We're gonna go for the straight in, and we're gonna activate that. Now, we're up pretty high, so it's already calculating our vertical speed required. You see right here, it's given us our where we want to be on our final. So we'll go ahead and select that. And it goes right to, to the actual altitude. We'll throw in the vertical speed, and we'll start a descent of 1,000 feet per minute. So we'll crank on down there. I'm going to pull the power back here just to keep us from overspeeding. So if I jump back here, you can see our setup for our straight in approach as we descend. And I'm gonna reach right around underneath the here, I'm gonna throw in a vertical situation display. This is gonna bring up terrain and obstacles. So you can see our descent as we're going down to meet up. We don't have any mountains, we don't have any uh, towers that are gonna act as obstacles for us. So I'm just going to bring the power back here. And I'll throw back our flight plan. So it's calling for about a 1,200 foot per minute descent. We'll keep it here to 1,000 just to keep it uh, comfortable. And you see our bottom descent is set up. And we can see on our multifunction display that we don't have any obstacles between us and the airport. If we did, we can edit these altitudes. So if we needed to come in at 2,000 or 2,500 feet to clear a, a, a ridge, we can do that while we're in our cruise flight. We don't have to wait for the approach to come up with that. So it really sets up for a stabilized approach. And uh, here on the on the PFD, we've got almost a glide slope-like display. Actually, it is a glide slope right, display. Yeah, right here. So the takeaway from all that is even though Garmin's visual approach guidance is loaded and activated just like an instrument approach is, it's even displayed the same way with vertical and lateral guidance, whether you're hand flying it or whether the autopilot's flying it, 
the system doesn't account for terrain along the way. And if the visual approach guidance is based on a three degree glide path and the runway you're making the approach to is based on say a five degree glide path, you're gonna be below VASI and that's not where you wanna be, particularly at night. I encourage you to go to the pilot's guide for whatever system you fly that has visual approaches, learn it, practice it, and uh, be cautious with it every time you fly it. Thank you.